Senior utility representatives from across the continent have gathered in Cape Town to share their experiences on solar energy. Joining us now uh, is uh, Daniel Blanco, who's uh, a manager for renewable and alternative energy at Initec Energia in Spain, and he's with me here in studio. Daniel, thanks for your time. I mean, the conference is focusing on both solar and hydropower, and I think right now with energy security issues in Africa, we're prepared to look at all options. Which is the most viable option? I mean, for me, clear is that it's a mix from the possible technologies that we might have around. I mean, you cannot simply walk away from coal now that you're here in, in South Africa. It wouldn't make any sense. But it's clear that you have a high potential on renewable energies that you should simply not discard. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can be as positive for the country as other technologies might be. I mean, although we are signatories to some kind of a Copenhagen pledge, not quite a protocol, and we've committed to reducing uh, greenhouse gases by the year 2030, the fact is we're still very much in an infancy stage in South Africa. As you're saying, we've been using fossil fuels to power our electricity system. I think we know very little about what the best approach ought to be. Um, your suggestions? I mean, so far, the, the issue has been that everybody has been pretty much running in circles, trying mm -hmm. to make a business as much as they could from these different renewable technologies. Yeah. But the problem is that what you need to do is simply try to learn for what has happened in other countries, and not only about their success, but mm -hmm. also about their failures. I mean, if you learn from what other people has already done and not tr try to think all the things over right. by yourself again, things might be a little easier okay, for so, everybody. So don't reinvent the wheel, South Africa. Those who look at our weather patterns say, if you look at the Eastern Cape, there's a strong argument for wind energy because it's quite windy in that part of the country. If you look at the rest of the country, especially the Northern Cape, there's a case for solar energy. The issue is bringing in those technologies seems to be very expensive, especially the solar. It's not really a matter of how expensive or cheap a technology is, and right now solar seems to be expensive. It's whether it makes a viable business case to anyone who is developing into it. So it's if the return that they get is fair. Mm. I mean, you can buy a very expensive thing, but if you can sell it for a higher price, mm. then you're able to get a fair business case. So right now the problem is that every, everybody is just targeting on what's the price. The price is very expensive. But what we would be trying to look for, what should mm. be looking for is that does this make a viable business case? Right. That's pretty much the point. Okay, does it make a viable business case? Because I think for a lot of independent power producers, their negotiations with government have really centered around the refit. It is really a sense of what they invest, they must be able to recover in a decent period of time in this investment. And the fact that you've got to overhaul a system, I mean, you've got to overhaul everything from the way in which houses are constructed in South Africa if you go the solar panel route. The problem in, in that thing is that uh, independent and power producers, if they are small, it's very hard for them to be driving this technology or these markets forward. I mean, solar technologies as well as wind are a high intensive investment. Mm -hmm. So normally it's large companies, the one that had been able to create success. I mean, small producers were not able to get almost anywhere in the United States mm -hmm. until they t were taken over by the big ones. The same thing happened in Spain. I mean, there are very few small investors, and mainly on the PV system, and they mm -hmm. have gone very hard times. It's been the big ones, the big companies, when they get into this market, the one that are able to drive the market mm -hmm. somewhere. Another of the mistakes in this uh, kind of uh, business is that everybody's looking for government fundings. Mm -hmm. And we should not forget that governments, they don't have more money. So we should try to look for alternative ways of funding this kind of technologies and approaches. And instead of asking the governments for money, asking the governments on how can we make this technology go move forward. Mm. I mean, this is pretty much the point. And everybody's making a very wishful thinking about the cost being reduced. And everybody's yeah. thinking economies of scale, massive production. But the truth is that in all these technologies, I mean, mainly PV and concentrated solar power, mm. The cost have been already reaching rock bottom. I mean, glass, steel, PV cells, I mean, they are already being massively manufactured. Mm. So the problem is that price might have a still a little margin, but little. But cost, I mean, we, ha we are not going to okay, be able you, to do that. How do you that. form an industry like that in a country like South Africa? Because you've got to consider two things. We're living in the renewable era, energy era at a time when we've got to boost our industrial output and also at a time when we're trying to create jobs. So whatever solutions 
that solar energy provides is not just towards electricity. It's towards some of the broader problems we have in this economy. So when we talk economies of scale, we like to hear that because if it employs people, we want to see people going into that sector. So if renewables can add to some of those, uh, add those dimensions to broader solutions, then it's something to consider. But if we're talking cottage industry, something small scale, it might not be a pressing case in a country like this. The problem is that in order to reduce this cost, as I was saying, economies of scale, what's happening is that most of the PV cells in the world, PV panels, are being produced in, in China. So all the economies of scales have been reached because they are producing massively in China. Mm. So you think about moving uh, industries here, I don't see how very well. I mean, there are some factories that might be established here, but that's not going to be driving things down in cost. There are some new technologies that are being uh, fine, I mean, they are way beyond the development phase that might be game changers into this because yeah. that they might have some kind of these technologies that might allow to be a local manufacturer that probably that will reduce the cost massively, kind yeah. of game changers. That's the kind of things that a country like South Africa could move forward and probably from South Africa extend right. it on until the rest of Africa. In recent conversations also, because there's a lot of these uh, climate change type conferences taking place, the Americans have been really astounded by the extent to which new regulations require local content. And that's really the context in which people investing in South Africa have to consider is that not only do you need local partners, but you have to ensure that along the supply chain, procurement also targets local industries because, like I say, we've got broader issues to solve. So if the supply chains and the production is happening in Asia, again, it takes away from the priorities of this country. No, that's the problem. That's what I was trying to say before. I mean, but in order to do that, I mean, you cannot put the rules, I mean, you cannot put the horses behind the, behind the cart. Yeah. I mean, what you need to do is just, okay, what do I need? Because you can ask for whatever you want. Mm. I mean, I, I want 100% local content. Mm. That's fair. The problem is that the price is going to be the one that takes to drive this local content forward. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is that you need to encourage the people, telling them, okay, we're going to develop this local content because you need these rules, and then they will create the local content and then develop the mm -hmm. projects. So it's just trying to sit with the government and not asking the money for the government. It's just trying to explain them what's all the conditions that take this mm -hmm. and how we can get over there and how we can fulfill mm -hmm. what are the needs. Because it's clearly that one of the needs, and it's not only happening in South Africa, the same thing is happening in any, mm. in any other country. India yeah. is like that. I yeah. mean, they want the local content because one of the things that these technologies or these markets can, be, can drive are these new jobs, new money. Mm. If everything is coming from outside, it makes yeah. no sense. Yeah, absolutely right. So you talk about innovative funding models. Just give us a sense of how we can go about it. If the government cannot sponsor the entire solar project and IPPs um, can raise the capital but are going to pass it on to consumers, what's the compromise? Let's look for innovative solutions, and I'm going to say something that, I mean, I just came out with it in a conversation this morning and might not have been very well thought yeah. of. But if you make the industries to invest in solar, let's say you have one of the largest mining companies in the world, if you force them to invest in solar, the issue is that if you force somebody who is selling inside of South Africa, it will always be reverted to the people, to the people in South Africa. But you know these mining companies, they are selling their products abroad. Mm. So if they reflect this forcing to invest in their product, the product is going to be paid outside of South Africa. Mm. So I mean, coming up with something is let's force some mining companies to say, okay, 25% of your energy consumption shall come from renewables. Mm. Then you are driving the market, you are forcing the people, and it's not going to be impacting in South African cost because they are selling their product outside. Mm -hmm. So it's, it will impact everybody else. That's one innovative solution, okay. but I'm sure that there are many others more. may come. Okay, well obviously the government could argue that they've already entered into co-generation agreements with some of the big industrial producers, mining companies and the like in the country. But for those that are saying we're looking for the best potential or the best alternative, the one that can at least piggyback off the technologies we already have as a mining house, as a paper mill, what would you say? Because again, I think a lot of us are going to be torn. Do we invest in solar panels? Do we invest in wind turbines? I mean, there's, I mean the beauty of South Africa and all these uh, developing countries that are, are around Africa is that if you try to do anything like that in Europe, I mean, we have already more installed power than we are using. But here in Africa, if the same thing happens in, in India and in China, you have a still room for, mix, for having a mix of all those technologies. 
I mean, PV panels, I mean, uh, PV panels have some advantages and some disadvantages. Mm -hmm. Wind has advantages and disadvantages. Concentrated solar power units, they have some advantages and some, some advantages. Mm -hmm. So the issue is that you need to look for a mix on the different technologies, mm -hmm. because if you go for only one thing, you get all the disadvantages from that. Mm -hmm. And just a final question, I know we've run out of time. At a consumer level, we're already being encouraged to uh, think of fitting into our homes solar geysers. The initial cost of uptake is what puts a lot of people off. So changing the mindset of consumers, how can we do it in a country like this? I think it's pretty hard because it impacts in the cost that you're installing. What we have found out in Spain is that for newly built things, it, this makes sense. And also for large industries. I mean, any large mall that you may have, any large industry installing rooftop installations, these are the kind of things that will reduce. And you can enforce that mm -hmm. because you are just tackling on the industry sector and you're just tackling them on the revenues, which is pretty much the point. Mm -hmm. So regarding the people, forcing someone to install a PV panel on top of his house, I find it hard. Mm -hmm. Though you can force the people who is building up a house in order to sell it, yeah. to have it installed. I think right. that's more fair. Okay, thanks so much for your time, Daniel Blanco. He's with Initec Energia from Spain, just talking to us about the pros and cons of moving the solar route.